Brought to you by wikivd.com The Wachowskis Lana Wachowski and Lily Wachowski are American film directors, screenwriters and producers. They are siblings and are both trans women. Collectively known as the Wachowskis, and formerly as the Wachowski brothers, the pair made their directing debut in 1996 with Bound, and achieved fame with their second film The Matrix, a major box office success, for which they won the Saturn Award for Best Director. They wrote and directed its two sequels, The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, and were deeply involved in the writing and production of other works in that franchise. Following the commercial success of The Matrix series they wrote and produced the 2006 film V for Vendetta and in 2008 released the film Speed Racer which was a live-action adaptation of the Japanese anime series of the same name. Their next film, Cloud Atlas based on the novel of the same name by David Mitchell and co-written and co-directed by Tom Tykwa was released in 2012. Their film Jupiter Ascending and the Netflix series Sense8, which they co-created with J. Michael Strachensky both debuted in 2015. Sense8 was cancelled after two seasons in June 2017 but later that month. It was announced that thanks to strong support from the fans it would return with a two-hour series finale in 2018. The sisters have worked as a writing and directing unit throughout their professional film careers, from Bound through the first season of Sense8. Following her gender transition, Lily Wachowski took a break from active writing and directing. Lana worked on the second season of Sense8 without her. Early life Lana was born Lawrence Wachowski in Chicago in 1965. Lily was born Andrew Paul Wachowski too, and a half years later in 1967. Their mother Lynn was a nurse and painter. Their father Ron Wachowski was a businessman of Polish descent. Their uncle is the actor and primetime Emmy Award-winning producer Lawrence Luck and Bill. They have two additional sisters, Julie and Laura. Julie was credited as assistant coordinator in the Wachowskis film Bound. She is a novelist and screenwriter. Lana and Lily attended Kellogg Elementary School in Chicago's Beverly area and they graduated from Whitney Young High School known for its performing arts and science curriculum in 1983 and 1985 respectively in both cases under their birth names. Former classmates recall their playing Dungeons and TV program. Lana went to Bard College in New York, and Lily attended Emerson College in Boston. Both dropped out before graduating. Career After dropping out of college the Wachowskis ran a house painting and construction business in Chicago while writing for Marvel Comics Ray's line in print, namely Ectokid in 1993. They also wrote the series Clive Barker's Hellraiser and Clive Barker's Nightbreed for Epic Comics. Film in the mid-1990s they branched out into film writing including the script for Assassins in 1994, which was directed by Richard Donner and released in 1995. Warner Brothers bought the script and included two more pictures in the contract. Donner had their script totally rewritten by Brian Helgeland and the Wachowskis tried unsuccessfully to remove their names from the film. They say the experience gave them the perspective that they should become directors or they will never survive as writers in this town. Their next project was the 1996 neo-noir thriller Bound for which they wrote the script and made their debut as directors. The film was well received for its style and craft and was noted as one of the first mainstream films to feature a gay relationship without it being central to the plot. Taking advantage of the positive buzz the Wachowskis asked to direct their next picture The Matrix. Influences 
J. Michael Strachinsky, who has worked with the Wachowskis on Ninja Assassin and Sense8, has said that the sisters told him they were reading his column on script writing for the Writer's Digest magazine for inspiration and pointers. Strachensky contributed to the magazine from 1981 to 1991. In 1998, in the context of explaining how they got their start in filmmaking, the Wachowskis mentioned Roger Corman's book How I Made a Hundred Movies in Hollywood and never lost a dime and indicated with laughter that they liked his movies and began by wanting to make a low-budget horror movie. In the same interview they expressed being flattered, after their first film by comparisons to the Coen brothers who had made five, maybe six great movies, at that time. Speaking to Bernard Weintraub of the New York Times in April 1999, the Wachowskis mention explicitly preparing for their first Matrix production by studying the works of John Woo and other Hong Kong filmmakers as well as reading and re-reading Homer's Odyssey and studying the works of John Huston, Stanley Kubrick, Fritz Lang, George Lucas, Ridley Scott and Billy Wilder. Mark Miller writing in Wired in 2003 also listed Homer Herman Hess Fyodor Dostoyevsky and philosopher Cornel West. In an interview with Gadfly in 2004 the Wachowskis reiterated their influence by or enjoyment of Houston and Wilder and added to these the impacts of Alfred Hitchcock, Roman Polanski and Francis Ford Coppola. Ken Wilber has been cited as an influence. The Matrix franchise they completed The Matrix, a science fiction action film in 1999. The movie stars Keanu Reeves as Neo, a hacker recruited by a rebellion to aid them in the fight against machines who have taken over the world and placed humanity inside a simulated reality called The Matrix. Lawrence Fishburne, Carrie Ann Moss, Hugo Weaving and Joe Pantoliano also star. The movie was a critical and commercial hit for Warner Brothers. It won four Academy Awards including for Best Visual Effects, for popularizing the bullet time visual effect. The Matrix came to be a major influence for action movies and has appeared in several greatest science fiction films lists. In 2012, the film was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry by the Library of Congress for being culturally, historically and aesthetically significant. After its success, the Wachowskis directed two sequels back-to-back -back, The Matrix Reloaded and The Matrix Revolutions, both released in 2003. The Matrix Reloaded received positive critical reception, although not on the level of the original. It became a major box office hit retaining the spot of the highest-grossing R-rated film for over a decade. The Matrix Revolutions received a mixed to negative critical reception, and performed lukewarmly in the box office. While it was profitable it made slightly less money than the original film. During production of the first film The Wachowskis and Spencer Lamb, who ran the film's official website developed comics based on the setting of the film which were published free of charge on the website. These, and a few short stories were released in three series from 1999 to 2003, with several of them collected in two print volumes in 2003 and 2004. The Wachowskis themselves contributed bits and pieces of prequel to the movie that explains the origins of The Matrix featuring illustrations by Geo Fdaro the movie's conceptual designer. Other writers and artists that contributed to the series include Neil Gaiman, Dave Gibbons, Paul Chadwick, Ted McKeever, Poppy Z. Bright, and Steve Scrose. Later work The Wachowskis' next feature film was V for Vendetta, an adaptation of Alan Moore's graphic novel of the same name starring Natalie Portman and Hugo Weaving. The Wachowskis wrote and produced the film with Matrix producer Joel Silver. 
who had previously purchased the film rights to the novel. The Wachowskis offered the film to James McTeague, the first assistant director of the Matrix trilogy, as his directorial debut. Moore did not participate in the production as he was disappointed by previous Hollywood adaptations of his work and disagreed with differences between the screenplay and his novel. Following a statement to the press by Silver that Moore was supposedly excited to learn more about the movie, Moore demanded from Silver to retract it, and when the latter didn't comply, Moore had his name removed from the credits. The film's controversial storyline and themes have been both criticized and praised by socio political groups. It was released in 2006 and was well received critically. It was a box office success but did not rank on the scale of the Matrix films. The film popularized the image of the Guy Fawkes mask originally designed by illustrator David Lloyd for the graphic novel which was adopted as a symbol by the online hacktivist group Anonymous two years later. In 2006 Silver had the Wachowskis and McTeague hired to revamp the invasion for Warner Brothers. The studio was disappointed in the film as produced by director Oliver Hirschbeagle and hired the Wachowskis to rewrite a portion of the script and add new action scenes, which McTeague directed. The film The Fourth Adaptation of the novel The Body Snatches was released in 2007 and was not a critical a box office success. The Wachowskis and McTeague are not credited on the film. The Wachowskis returned to directing with Speed Racer which starred Emile Hirsch. The film which was again produced by Silver was an adaptation of a 1960s Japanese manga series originally called Mac Go Go Go, which had previously been adapted as an anime television series in 1967. The Wachowskis were attracted to the project because the series was the first anime they had watched and they wanted to make a family-friendly film for their nieces and nephews to enjoy. In an effort to simulate the look of anime in live action the Wachowskis had cinematographer David Tattersall shoot the movie digitally on a digital backlet, with the intention of adding extensive visual effects in post-production. The movie was considered a critical and commercial disappointment. While its special effects were noted as outstanding the storyline is considered lacking. It was nominated in the category of Worst Prequel Remake Rip Off a Sequel for the 29th Golden Raspberry Awards. Its box office gross was $93 million compared to a production budget of $120 million. Since then, critics periodically have put the film on lists of underrated occult films. The Wachowskis' next film project was Ninja Assassin, a martial arts film starring Rain that was released in 2009. It was produced by the Wachowskis in the last involvement with Silver and directed by McTeague, and it was inspired by Rain's fighting scene in Speed Racer. The screenplay was written by Matthew Sand and J. Michael Strachensky who the Wachowskis called six weeks before filming to ask him for a complete rewrite completed within a week because they were dissatisfied with the earlier drafts and were running out of time. Ninja Assassin received negative reviews and performed lukewarmly in the theaters but respectably on home video. Their next directorial outing was Cloud Atlas which was adapted from David Mitchell's 2004 novel of the same name and starred an ensemble cast which included Tom Hanks and Halle Berry. Cloud Atlas was written and directed in collaboration with German filmmaker Tom Tyqua to whom the Wachowskis had introduced the novel several years earlier. The filmmakers failed to secure funding from a studio and was produced independently after much trouble. With a budget of over $100 million it was noted as the most expensive independent movie. To that date and the first attempt at a German blockbuster, the movie opened at the 37th annual Toronto International Film Festival in September 2012 to acclaim.
and received a loud and lengthy standing ovation. In its general release a month later, it received polarizing reviews and eventually appeared in both Best Film and Worst Film lists. Overall reviews were mixed to positive. The film received many nominations and awards, particularly for its technical aspects, including 10 nominations in the German Film Awards out of which it won 5, and 5 Saturn Award nominations out of which it won 2. In contrast to Moore's aversion to the script and production of V for Vendetta David Mitchell liked the script of Cloud Atlas, spent some time on the set and had a positive impression about the end result. According to the Wachowskis the movie was the hardest of their films to make, the one they are the most proud of, and the one they have been told has touched people's lives the most. They believe Cloud Atlas will be the film they will be remembered for. The Wachowskis subsequently produced and directed Jupiter Ascending, an original space opera screenplay they wrote. The film was released in 2015. It stars Channing Tatum and Mila Kunis, and features the Wachowskis' regular collaborators John Gator on visual effects, and Kim Barrett on costumes. According to Deadline the financial and critical failure of Jupiter Ascending caused their business relationship with Warner Brothers. That began with the Matrix franchise to be terminated. Their next project was the Netflix science fiction drama series Sense8 created and written with J. Michael Strachinsky. Sense8 features an international ensemble cast, and it is shot in a multitude of cities around the world. The Wachowskis directed most of the episodes of the first season with the rest being handled by Matigue Taikwa and they go to visual effects supervisor on the movie's Dan Glass. On his directorial debut, the first season premiered in 2015, to generally positive reviews particularly for the scale of the production, and the presentation of diverse and LGBT characters and themes winning the GLAAD Media Award for Outstanding Drama Series. It has also received a Primetime Emmy Award nomination for Outstanding Original Main Title Theme Music. A Christmas special was released December 23, 2016, with the remainder of the show's second season released in May 2017. Subsequently, a third season was cancelled and the series will conclude with a two-hour finale to be aired in 2018. In June 2016 the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences invited the Wachowskis to join its ranks. Style The Wachowskis admit to a love for telling multi-part stories, because we grew up on comic books, and the Tolkien trilogy one of the things we're interested in is bringing serial fiction to cinema Lana has said. Lily says, we think movies are fairly boring and predictable. We want to screw with audiences' expectations. In terms of themes expressed in their body of work, Lana has cited the inexplicable nature of the universe being in constant dialogue with our own consciousness, and our consciousness actually affecting the inexplicable nature of the universe. Interconnectivity and about truth beneath the surface the paradox of choice and choicelessness. Transcendence Transcending archetypal boxes stereotypes race, an important component and gender, it's one of our most significant cultural subjects. The Wachowski cited the art of comic book artist Geoff Darrow as an influence on the look of the Matrix. Also they said that Ghost in the Shell Ninja Scroll and Akira were anime that inspired them saying in anime one thing that they do that we tried to bring to our film was a juxtaposition of time and space in action beats. The Wachowski cited Stanley Kubrick's 2001, A Space Odyssey as a major influence for Cloud Atlas. They first saw the film when they were 10 and 7 respectively. Lana has most been influenced by 2001, A Space Odyssey, Blade Runner, Marvin Rose and My Neighbor Totoro.
Both Wachowskis are fans of the Ghost in the Shell Akira Wicked City Ninja Scroll and Fist of the North Star anime films. None of the home video releases of their films feature any deleted scenes. Lana says that despite often having to cut scenes from their movies they do not want to include deleted scenes in such releases as this would suggest that their films suffer from incompleteness. They love their finished products and believe them complete. For the same reason they have not released their films for home video with directors or extended cuts. They also avoid recording audio commentary tracks, having participated only on the track recorded for the laser disc of Bound. The sisters say they learned that offering an interpretation of their movies means that viewers will be less likely to express their own interpretation. Frequent Collaborators the Wachowskis frequently hire the same basic film crew to make their movies. Lana admits they do it in part to ensure a positive environment. It's like family. Everyone is very respectful of each other, says Lana. They use the same practice while selecting the television crew for their Netflix show Sense8. Some of their most notable frequent collaborators are as film producers and comic book publishers. During The Matrix Reloaded, The Matrix Revolutions, The Animatrix and Enter The Matrix production. The Wachowskis created Eon Entertainment, their production company, to coordinate and direct all involved partners. It is also where the films were edited together. After the various FX vendors sent their finished work, Eon's internal VFX team ESC did a number of visual effects shots for the two Matrix sequels and coordinated the other vendors. ESC was shut down in summer 2004. Anikos Productions is their production company that has been billed for all their films starting with V for Vendetta up to the first season of Sense8. In the second season and following Lily's break from the show Anikos is replaced by Venus Castina Productions, a production company created by Lana Wachowski and her wife, Karen Winslow. It is named after the epithet of the Roman goddess Venus who in this form was supposedly associated with the yearnings of feminine souls locked up in male bodies. Canal Wix is their pre- and post-production and effects studio, based in the Ravenswood neighborhood of Chicago. It has been acclaimed for its green-friendly design. Roger Ebert was invited to watch a restored print of The Godfather in the Canal Wix facilities and met the Wachowskis, but he was oblivious to the fact the studio belonged to them. The Chicago Tribune's Christopher Pirelli The facility is very low-key an industrial building that appears neither old nor especially new and it could be an upscale dentist's office while the inside is rather unexpected and has numerous mementos of past film projects. Prior to working in the film industry, the Wachowskis wrote comic books for Marvel Comics Ray's line in print, namely Ektokid in 1993 as well as writing for epic comics Clive Barker's Hellraiser and Clive Barker's Nightbreed comic series. In 2003 they created Burleyman Entertainment, and released comic books based on The Matrix as well as two original bi-monthly series. Unrealized Projects The Wachowskis' first script was a thriller called Carnivore. It has been described as a Corman-style low-budget horror movie that dealt with cannibalism and more specifically rich people being eaten by cannibals. The writing was well received, and the script made the duo noticed. Although interest in making the movie was low as executives told them this is a bad idea. I can't make this. I'm rich. Years later on April 6, 1999, a week after The Matrix opened in American theaters, Variety reported Tremark was looking to buy the script and were in talks with George Romero to direct it with production scheduled to begin in August. In April 2001, news of the Wachowskis producing it for Lionsgate and looking 
four or director surfaced again and in August 2003 a second time. With their go-to cinematographer Bill Pope rumored to be making his directorial debut with it. The film ultimately went unproduced. Another two of their earliest scripts which were never produced were Plastic Man, based on the DC Comics superhero of the same name, and Vertical Run based on the book of the same name by Joseph R. Garber. After completing The Matrix the Wachowskis were looking to make an animated adaptation of Frank Miller's hard-boiled graphic novel. The comic was drawn by Geoff Darrow, the conceptional designer of The Matrix and later its sequels. The project didn't move forward because Miller didn't want it to be an animated film. In November 2000 Variety reported the Wachowskis would produce co-create and direct second unit on a new Conan the Barbarian movie for Warner Brothers which was to be written and directed by John Milius and which could see Arnold Schwarzenegger make an appearance. The Wachowskis were planning to juggle their pre-production involvement on the movie and work on the Matrix sequels at the same time. In January 2004 it was reported that development on King Conan, Crown of Iron had stalled for years because of the Wachowskis' involvement in the Matrix sequels. And now that the movies were complete, they decided to abandon the project of their own Valician. Because of the frequent clashes they had experienced with Milius concerning the tone and direction of the movie, Lana once suggested Conan the Barbarian as her favorite movie based on comics, to which Lily also responded enthusiastically. In 2008 the Wachowskis were producing, for Madhouse an animated film based on their comic book company's Shaolin Cowboy, titled Shaolin Cowboy and the Tomb of Doom. The feature is co-directed by the comic book's creator Geoff Darrow and Seiji Mizushima, a Japanese director. When the American financiers backed out the film was left half-finished and in need of $3 million. Darrow does not believe that the required amount of money to finish it will be found. In December 2009 Arianna Huffington tweeted pictures of herself on the set of O. Wachowski's movie on Iraq from the perspective of the future. Chud.com reported what the Wachowski's were doing was camera tests and shooting of test footage on the red digital camera for a future movie but not shooting the movie itself. In March 2010 Jesse Ventura said he had also shot for the project right before Huffington. Both of them were dressed as people from roughly 100 years in the future and they were asked to improvise without a script about the Iraq War. In May 2010, Deadline reported the movie was going to be a hard-ass story that would begin in the future but move back to the then-current war in Iraq, and center on the homosexual relationship between an American soldier and an Iraqi. The Wachowskis completed the script and were searching for funding to direct it. In July 2010, the movie was reported to have begun casting under the code name CN9, and in August 2010 the full name was revealed as Cobalt Neural 9. In September 2010, Volta posted additional details about the script and revealed the movie would be told in found footage style from the perspective of digital archaeologists from the future. An estimated $20 million budget was reported although they were told a studio would never ever finance it but perhaps the Wachowskis could do it themselves. In December 2010, The Hollywood Reporter wrote that Salman Rushdie and Cornel West had also shot talking head sequences along with the previously reported involvement of Huffington and Ventura, but the Wachowskis were currently looking into other movies because of troubles financing it. Later in September 2012 Alexander Heman wrote about the making of Cloud Atlas and recalled he too was one of the people the Wachowskis had invited to interview in December 2009 to help inspire the script of Cobalt Neural 9.
The last update on the film was in October 2012, when the Wachowskis were asked about it and they responded they were still keen to make it, because they had invested both financially and emotionally into it, even if that ends up being in a different form than film. In December 2010, The Hollywood Reporter wrote that the Wachowskis were planning to direct for Warner Brothers. A script of theirs called Hood which was a modern adaptation of the Robin Hood legend. The Wachowskis were said to be reaching out to actors including Will Smith. Personal life Lily has been married to Elisa Blassingame since 1991. Lana married Thea Bloom in 1993. They divorced in 2002. Lana subsequently began dating Karen Winslow. They married in 2009. Winslow is a board member of the Chicago House and Social Service Agency. Raised by a hardcore atheist father and an ex-Catholic turned shamanist mother, the duo once described their religious beliefs as non-denominational Christians. Lana is a vegetarian. During the Democratic Party presidential primaries of 2016, the advocate posted a video message of Lana talking about why she would be supporting Bernie Sanders. Lana's gender transition Rumors that Lana Wachowski was transitioning spread in the early 2000s. Though neither sibling spoke directly on the subject at the time. In 2003, Gothamist.com reported the possible gender reassignment. In a 2007 interview Joel Silver, the producer of numerous Wachowski films, said that the rumors concerning the gender reassignment surgery were all untrue saying that they just don't do interviews so people make things up. Crew members working on Speed Racer said similarly. Lana completed the transition after Speed Racers released in 2008 and by at least December 2010. Trade magazines and newspapers referred to her as Lana Wachowski her preferred name and to the duo as Andy and Lana Wachowski. On some documents her name is shown as Lauren Kerr Wachowski. In July 2012, Lana made her first public appearance after transitioning. In a video discussing the creative process behind Cloud Atlas, Lana is the first major Hollywood director to come out as transgender. In October 2012, Lana Wachowski received the Human Rights Campaign's Visibility Award. In her acceptance speech, she revealed that once during her youth she had considered committing suicide because of her feelings of confusion about identity. Her acceptance speech was one of the longest public appearances by either of the notoriously reclusive siblings. Lana said that although she and her sibling had not publicly commented on her transitioning during the previous decade, it was not because she was ashamed of it nor had she kept it a secret from her family and friends. Rather she stated the two are generally shy about the news media and prefer to maintain their privacy, comparing media exposure to losing one's virginity is an irreversible event that only happens once the Wachowskis had tried to stay out of the public eye. They feared losing their privacy and the ability to go to public places without being noticed and harassed as celebrities, explaining her decision. To appear at the HRC event Lana said there are some things we do for ourselves but there are some things we do for others. I am here because when I was young I wanted very badly to be a writer. I wanted to be a filmmaker but I couldn't find anyone like me in the world. And it felt like my dreams were foreclosed simply because my gender was less typical than others. If I can be that person for someone else, then the sacrifice of my private civic life may have value. In February 2014, Lana received the Freedom Award from Equality Illinois at their annual gala in Chicago. Lily's Gender Transition In March 2016 Lily Wachowski also came out as a transgender woman issuing a statement. 
to the Windy City Times after a visit from a reporter from the Daily Mail newspaper. While on the red carpet of the 27th GLAAD Media Awards, Lily commented she had been hiding she was transgender throughout her whole life. Gaming Lana and Lily are self-proclaimed gamers. As teens they spent their weekends in the attic playing dungeons. They liken the process of their playing parties to their process of filmmaking. Along with some of their friends they wrote a 350-page role-playing game of their own called High Adventure. On the video game front they had been exchanging letters with Hideo Kojima and met him during a Famitsu interview in late 1999. Metal Gear Solid was the first video game they played after finishing work on The Matrix. Candidates for an adaptation of the first Matrix movie to video game form included Kojima Bungie and Shiny Entertainment whose Messiah PC game impressed them. Shinny's David Perry, who ultimately had his company develop and collaborate with them on the end of The Matrix. And The Matrix, part of Neo Video Games was impressed with their familiarity with the medium. This proved helpful during development. The Wachowskis owned both a PlayStation 2 and Xbox video game console and played several games such as Splinter Cell and Halo 2. They reportedly destroyed their Xbox during a Halo deathmatch. Actor Colin Chu recounts an instance of visiting their office and finding them playing video games on the floor. Lily is a fan of the Death Jr. PlayStation Portable game, asked about their feelings about turning the tightly controlled Matrix saga to the unpredictable form of an MMORPG with a Matrix Online. The duo appeared enthusiastic about the nature and possibilities of video games. Music videos Additionally classifying themselves as lifelong Rabbit Bulls fans, they created a revamped introductory animation for Chicago Bulls. To open the 2006-2007 regular season, Brought to you by wikivd.com Would you like to know more?